Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the Pong series and you've been following this series then you know that in the last video we got a key listener up and running so that when we start a window we can determine which key the user is pressing. If you haven't seen that I suggest you check that out because it will be important for this video. Um, well, won't be important for this video but for the future videos. In this video what we're going to do is we're going to start building a rectangle class that we will use to draw our paddles on the screen and the ball on the screen. And we will also use this to detect collisions and everything like that. So this will be sort of the main class that does a little bit of everything. Um, so we'll start off by just creating a new Java class. We will call this rect for rectangle. And then inside of this rect class, um, we will create an initializer. And we'll take in the x, the y position, the width, and the height. And so um, let's have some private member variables here and we will say x, int x, y, width, and height. And then when we initialize this, say this dot x equals x, this dot y equals y, width equals width. This is just basic Java syntax and this dot height equals height. Okay. So now that we have this rectangle built, it would be nice if we could see it whenever we are actually displaying this on the screen. So let's make a draw method. And this draw method is gonna have to take a graphics 2D object because we can't draw it on the screen unless we have a handle to that graphics object. And of course, we're gonna have to import java.graphics2D. We will import that up there. Okay, and then so to draw a rectangle is really simple, all we'll do, well, let's actually give it a little bit more customizability because right now if the user draws the rectangle it's just going to use whichever color it was using previously so let's also have a color variable here and this will determine the color that we want to draw this rectangle and then if we click on IntelliJ we can see that we can import this from aught color from Java and then we'll just pass this into the constructor as well so what color do you want your rectangle to be so color equals color. Okay, now we can draw this rectangle. It's really simple. First, we'll set the color. So we'll say set color, color, and then we'll draw the rectangle. Uh, we will fill this rectangle in. So we'll say fill rect, and we'll say x, y, width, height. And that will draw a rectangle at the specified position on the screen. Now, if we go back to our constants, our screen width is 800. Our screen height is 600. So let's create a new rectangle and draw this on the screen. I'll get rid of this little bit of code that we were using. And we'll say our rect rect equals a new rect. And so we'll draw this at 50, 100. Give it a width of 40 and a height of 80. So like a little paddle. Oh, and then what color do we want it to be? We'll say color dot blue. Because blue is my favorite color. Okay, then we'll say rec dot draw g2. Pass it the graphics object so that the rectangle is able to draw itself. And so with all of this, we should see a rectangle being drawn a little bit to the left top of our screen. And sure enough, it's there. And this is another thing that I should probably mention because if you're used to most uh, standard coordinate frames, we said the y position is 100. Um, why is it all the way up here? Well, in the J frame, it actually starts the xy coordinate off up here. So this is the origin. This is where xy is. So x extends this way. Y extends positively down this way. And everything is specified from the top left corner. So if we want to find out where this xy, where our rectangle is getting drawn, we go over 50 in the x and then we go 100 down which makes no sense, but this is the way they do it, in the y. And then it starts drawing it from here, and then it draws it x plus width, and then y plus height to draw the rectangle. So if we want it to be at the bottom of the screen, we would have to rather unintuitively say, let's draw it at constants dot screen height minus 100. And so this should draw in the same orientation, except at the bottom of the screen instead of the top, 100 pixels up. So if we do this again, we see it's down here and it actually looks a little bit off and that's because of some other things that the J frame has, which we will deal with later. But for now, this is satisfactory and we have our rectangle drawn on the screen. Now with all this information, let's actually set up a couple of players 
that we will eventually be able to use. So we'll say rect player one equals, well, we'll initialize that in the initializer. And then we'll say rect AI, and that will be our AI. And then we'll say rect ball. Um, we can actually declare these all on the same line too. Okay. So then in our initializer, we will simply say rect player one equals a new rectangle. And we'll give it a width of like 30, a height of like 40. We'll see how now nah, let's go. Let's go 60. We'll see how this looks. And then, um, oh, and this is the X, Y actually. So we'll just initialize that as zero, zero. And then a width of 30, a height of 60. And then we'll say color dot white because that is the classic Pong color. And then AI equals new rect. Uh, we'll initialize this guy on the right side of the screen. So we'll say screen width minus 30 since that's the width we're using. And then zero, and then we'll say 30, 60, and color dot white. So this should give us a little AI pattern. And then we'll initialize the ball in the center of the screen. So rect equals, we'll say um, constants dot screen width over 2.0, oh, over two, constants dot screen height over two, and then we'll say width, uh, we'll give it like 20 by 20, that should be good. And then we'll make this white as well. Okay, now we've got these three player AI in the ball. So we can say player one dot draw G2, AI dot draw G2, ball dot draw G2. Nice, and if we play this now, we should get, oh, and we get rectangle up here, rectangle up here and a ball in the middle. And these are very fat and not that big. So let's change this up a little bit, okay? Um, and you can tweak these settings to whatever you want. And to make this easier, instead of having these magic numbers, I'm gonna go into constants and define public, static, final, int, uh, paddle, width, equals, and we'll start off with 20, public, static, final, int, paddle, height, and last height we had was clearly not good enough. We'll change this to 100. And then public static final color paddle color equals color dot white. The color, I don't know if this is strictly necessary, but it might be nice if you want to just make it very easy to change if you have to change anything. So we'll import color here. Okay. And then we'll go over here. We will replace width with constants dot paddle width and we'll replace height constants dot paddle height we will replace the color white with constants dot paddle color and then we will just copy and paste these down to here so we'll paste that there paste this here and paste this here that should give us easy control and we'll make one more for the ball. We'll just say ball width because the width is the height. Int ball width equals, and we'll do that to 10 because 20 by 20 looked a little too big. Okay, go back to my window and then we will change this to constants.ball width. And then I will just copy that over to here. Okay, and then we'll just color this constants dot paddle color so we'll give it the same color as the paddle okay and let's draw this see how this looks real quick okay that's looking a little bit better this still looks a little bit fat that's kind of weird let's actually give this some padding too because they're right up on the side of the screen and if you know pong there's usually some padding on the side of the screen so we'll say final int horizontal padding and we'll give it a padding of like 40 pixels. That should be good. Go back in here to our window. Um, instead of initializing that zero, we will initialize at horizontal padding, uh, constant uh, h padding. And then the y, we'll actually, we'll move it down. We'll give it some vertical padding as well, just, just for the start. We don't even need that. Let's, let's just, we'll put this number in there because there shouldn't be any vertical padding. So we'll do it at 40, change this guy to 40 as well and minus 30, and we can actually say minus constants.paddle width 
and then minus the padding as well. Okay, and then this should give us some padding on the side so that we can really see how big these paddles are. Okay, cool. This doesn't look too bad. I would like my paddles to be just a little bit thinner. Like I said, you can initialize yours to anything you want. So I'll make mine like 10 pixels by 100 pixels. And I think that should look pretty good. Cool, okay. So now we've got a basic Pong screen up. Um, you can see it's just about done. We might decrease that padding just a little bit. And then there'll be a few things we have to do. If you notice the uh, right side doesn't look quite the same as the left side. And that's because of some uh, built-in features of the J-Frame that we will take into account in a future video. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Um, and next video, we will actually get into the player controller. And so we will have this paddle be able to move using the up and down arrow keys, which shouldn't be too hard. Feel free to try and implement it yourself. I think you can do it. It would be a good exercise. And then after, uh, we might also instantiate a little AI controller too that follows the ball and then implements some movement for the ball. Okay, cool. I hope you guys like this video and I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.